The stock market is down, crypto is down, the housing market is trending down, and companies are letting go of their employees left and right. But in this video, I don't want to talk about crypto, the stock market, or the housing market because that's not what we talk about on this channel. What I do want to talk about in this video is Turo and car sharing and why I believe that despite the fact that some industries are in for a tough couple of years during this recession, I don't think Turo or car sharing is one of them. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about why I believe Turo and car sharing is relatively recession proof, why I think Turo will not crash during this recession and what you should know and how you should plan accordingly. And I'm also going to be talking about why if you're somebody that has seen a little bit of decline in demand in your market or with your cars, why this isn't due to a recession and what you can do in order to draw up demand. So let's get started. Today is 4th of July. Happy 4th of July to all of my American viewers. I couldn't find any 4th of July outfit, so this is the closest that I got to it, which was a shirt HP got me like eight years ago, but it'll do for this video. Now, like I said just a moment ago, what I wanna talk about today is why I believe that Turo will not be heavily impacted by a recession, at least not to the point where I would ever consider it anything close to a crash. Now, whenever we look at Turo and car sharing, there are so many different industries and niches within this one industry. You may have people that rent out high-end luxury cars, electric cars, trucks, family vehicles, low-end economy cars, mid-tier economy cars, and the list goes on and on. And the reality is, is that whenever we look at car sharing as a whole, and then we look at all of these niches within this industry, these individual niches or many industries are not gonna be impacted equally by a recession. You see vehicles that are targeted towards vacation towards date night, towards people that want to go out on a town with a really nice car. These are the industries or the niches that are going to be significantly more impacted by a recession. That's because whenever somebody's at risk or has lost their job and they need to cut their spending, they're going to look to cut their spending with these frivolous expenses first. And unfortunately, because of that, the first things to go are eating out at restaurants, going on vacation and spending on unnecessary experiences that may be fun, but aren't crucial to your survival. On the other hand though, we have the flip side of the coin, which is cars targeted towards family commuting from point A to point B, people that need to get to work, people that need to pick up their kids from school, or people that simply need a car because their car is broken or in the shop. These are the types of cars that will continue to do well regardless of what the economy is doing. This alone to an extent is going to prevent a crash because Turo and other car sharing platforms out there are very diverse in the cars that they offer and the price ranges that they offer them in. And so because of this, you may see a dramatic decline with the high-end luxury or exotic sector of Turo. But on the flip side, you may see steady or even an increase in demand with low-end economy cars or mid-tier cars or cars that are targeted towards family. But this isn't it. We also have to look at how the recession and how the economy will affect the individual host. And I think that this is where the impact will be much more severe. But to be honest, I don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing. I do believe that over the next few months or even over the next few years, we as Turo hosts may have to lower our expectation a bit. You see, over the last two years, Turo demand has been through the roof. And as a result, Turo hosts have been able to make a ton of money. It's been relatively easy to make money on Turo between 2021 and 2022, but I don't know that that will continue long-term. And I do think that in the coming months or in the coming years, we as Turo hosts will probably have to lower our price and I think that this could spell out trouble for a lot of hosts throughout the country. Because the unfortunate reality is a lot of hosts will not be able to survive lower prices. The hosts that have financed 100% of their cars and are now upside down on these vehicles, and there are a lot more hosts than you would think that fall into this category. The hosts that rely on $100 per day pricing in order to make their monthly payments. The hosts that don't pay attention to margin and true profit. These are the hosts that are going to be squeezed out whenever a recession does occur because they're simply not gonna be in a position to thrive and survive. And like I mentioned a moment ago, I think that we would all be surprised at how many hosts fall into these different categories. They're at risk of losing everything once a recession is in full swing. And though I of course would never wish that anybody would fail at Turo or any side hustle or business that they ever take part in. I do think that there is going to be a positive trickle down effect that other hosts will experience from this squeeze out. And that trickle down effect is as these hosts end up getting squeezed out and they inevitably have to leave the Turo platform, there is then less hosts to compete with whenever it comes to getting rentals. But these are just two of the three aspects of the equation that I think will play a major role as to why Turo will not crash. And the third and final reason really comes down to the affordability of 
well, everything. Life is extremely expensive right now. It is expensive to just survive. Housing is expensive, food is expensive, gas is expensive, and buying a car is extremely expensive as well. And to top all of this off, it's getting more and more expensive to borrow money to potentially buy a car. And because of this, there will be consistent demand in peer-to-peer -peer car sharing from people that either can't afford to buy their own car, or alternatively, they are opting to get their own car fixed instead of buying a new one and while they get their car fixed, they rent a car from you. I get a ton of renters every single week who are renting my cars because their car is currently in the shop and they need a mode of transportation while their car is getting fixed. I would estimate that between 25 and 30% of all of my renters fall into this category. And the reality is, is that whenever we're in a time of a recession, people are much more likely to get their car repaired rather than replace it. And they need a ride and they need a car whenever their car is getting fixed. And as a Turo host, you can provide that mode of transportation for them. When it comes to a recession, the high-end luxury and exotic market will be hit the worst. Low-end economy, mid-tier economy, SUVs targeting families, and electric vehicles and hybrids are all cars and segments that I think will continue to do well throughout a recession. And though I do think it's expected to probably see a decrease in demand, I certainly don't think a crash is coming. But now begs the question of what can you do if you're somebody that is already seeing a decline in demand with your own Turo fleet? What are some of the best practices that you can keep in mind and what can you do in order to improve demand for your cars? So first and foremost is pricing. Make sure that your pricing is competitive with the people around you. And if that means that you need to slightly undercut the competition for a short period of time, then that's something that you just may need to do. Whenever I list a brand new car on the platform, I always undercut that car compared to everybody else that has a similar car. This allows for guests to get a really good deal. It gets some trips under that vehicle's belt and it also gets some five-star reviews on the profile as well. This helps get that same car more and more rentals and as a result, I can then increase that price. And the same logic applies to you if you're somebody that's struggling to increase the demand on your cars. Keep an eye on pricing, make sure that it's competitive and if it isn't competitive, lower your price at least temporarily. Next is check your availability. This is something that I think can oftentimes be the cause of why you aren't seeing demand. And I think a lot of hosts don't even really realize it. You wanna keep your availability as open as possible. For me, I like to keep my advance notice for one hour, my trip buffer time to three hours, which is the minimum Turo allows. I like to keep my trip duration as the any for short as possible, as well as long as possible. And I'll also consider longer trips as well. I make sure that I never put calendar blocks on my calendar, especially for long periods of time, unless something comes up that can't be avoided, like for example, an oil change. And I will, to the best of my ability, try to plan maintenance in between trips. That way I don't have to block off the calendar. If you're blocking off your Turo calendar, even a couple of hours per week, that will have a trickle down effect on the total demand of your vehicle. And it will heavily impact how much you make on Turo. And lastly is check your listing. Make sure that your profile is complete, that it shows a picture of you, a quick bio of what you do, who you are, and what you're all about. Make sure that you have good photos of the car showing the exterior and the interior, and make sure that you're laying out the guidelines of what exactly the guest can expect. You wanna make sure to be clear, concise, and overall have a positive, friendly tone. I found more often than not, if you have a really overly aggressive, assertive tone in your listing, that will have a negative impact on how many people wanna rent from you. And last but not least, one tactic that you can try that I've never confirmed if it actually does work, but I have tried it myself. And I feel like it does, but I don't know if it's just a coincidence. And that is go into the Turo app, scroll down until you see the button that says snooze, and then snooze and unsnooze your vehicle listing. So snooze it and then unsnooze it right away. I've heard that this does something with the Turo algorithm. Again, I don't know if that's confirmed. I've heard it from really large hosts before, so I think it's worth giving it a try. But you guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I wanted to address this because I know on YouTube, there's so many YouTubers and creators talking about a recession and the doom and gloom that is ahead. And though I do think a lot of industries will be crashing in the next couple of months or in the next couple of years, I personally don't think Turo and car sharing is one of them. And I think to an extent, car sharing is pretty recession proof. And I feel really optimistic about the future of not only Turo, but car sharing as a whole. But like always, you guys, if you have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, make sure to leave a comment down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit that notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video.